Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the countdown? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, hello. Hey. Um, <laughs> please tell us a little bit about yourself. Wow, that is always an amazing question. Okay, um, I guess I'll start with my origin. So I was born in Texas, kind of like the end of an army brat legacy with my father. Um, preacher's kid, um, youngest out of four siblings, and I was raised in South Carolina. So from the age of one to 17. Lived in South Carolina, I lived in Columbia, went to school at Northeast, and then I moved to New York at 17, and my whole life was just different from there. Um, since then, I've been back and forth, lived in different cities, and I'm back here now. So, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, how did you get started? Get started in what exactly? I feel like I do so many things. Maybe I need to go back to the other question <laughs> and then add more to that. Well, what, what would you consider your main thing, I guess? Like, my main thing? Yeah. I would just say a uh, multidisciplinary artist because I cannot choose. Um, I'm definitely a writer, I write prose. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at my nephew here. <laughs> He's so cute. Rude. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just a lover of, of people, certain people, and I'm an artist, so I emote and I put it in different mediums. Music is definitely one of those. I've been involved in music since I was a kid as well, acting as well, so I've, I've done all of those things. Alright, alright. Well, who are some of your influences in, in music or in art? Yeah, and let me go back to how I got started. Yeah, yeah. I think it was just in, I, I, I sang in the church, you know, I was born in Texas, so I learned to talk and sing in Texas, so I really had like a western accent. I thought that was pretty interesting. Now I find it coming back in my voice, you know, when I sing, in my inflections and things like that. Uh, with the writing, it just started at home. My, my sister taught me how to read. I was reading at three. Mm -hmm. So, kind of a gifted and talented child. And my influences uh, range from the greats, you know, the great vocalists of our time, uh, from Whitney to uh, Mariah to even Roberta Flack and gospel artists um, to the the contemporaries like Brandy is all, one of my all-time favorite singers. Um, Aaliyah, of course. Um, who else? I want to name one more contemporary that's not... I mean, I remember even um, Tamia, amazing vocalist who I used to sing their songs. And now some of my um, influences in this day and age are I love Corinne Bailey Ray, I love Jill. Um, and these are just voices I grew up with that helped me learn how to sing because I used to mimic them until I found my own voice and then I went into rock like I covered a lot of No Doubt during my time in New York, you know, traveling around trying to trying to, trying to do music. All right, a lot, of, a lot of different influences. Man. Yes. Um, so what's your creative process like? Wow, I always say that um, it could be anything from getting drunk, getting drunk on red wine and like doing a drunk text or phone call and having a really bad conversation that ends up being regrettable, right? Um, you know, life is really like living through life and processing life is really the creative process or it could be like something's happening in the world and I want to speak to that. And so how am I going to find a cool way to do that? Um, also, I cannot deny the influence of hip hop for me, me and my sister used to write down the lyrics from everyone to like the brat and like just different rappers and we used to like write down the lyrics and like basically study them. We had our own way of studying hip hop so it's kind of like one of those things where um, the creative process just is in me. I haven't really nailed down an actual process that I can pinpoint right now. I just know that when the moment hits me, I just, I just go for it. Um, so what's the best work that you've done so far? My best work has had to be the band that I'm a part of, PMS. Um, I've done some solo stuff, but just in terms of the original spins and covers that we have been able to create, I'm so proud of how they helped me get out of the box because we have 
a traditional classical pianist and then we have um, a percussionist who's still learning and we're all learning from each other. They're into different kinds of music that I've never ever thought I'd be into and try to cover and sing and learn from. So I would say that's one of my favorite projects. Um, the question, what is your purpose? My purpose, my purpose, my purpose is to be here to, to love. And love is not always easy, love is not always nice. Love can be hard, but I do believe that I'm here to be in love, you know, romantic love. I'm here to engage in relationship with people and to truly connect with others through various means. Absolutely. Um, what is your current project? My current project is getting this money <laughs> with this nine to five or eight to eight, whatever it is right now. Um, also, uh, I think now that COVID is kind of, things are kind of opening up here, at least in the Columbia area, we are going to start making music again. So I'm sure PMS, we're going to start doing more, um, doing more music. Okay. Um, if you weren't an entertainer, what would you do? It's so funny. I'm already so much more a businesswoman. A businesswoman. That's right. What, um, what is your favorite childhood memory? Oh my God! I have to say this because it just came up today. <laughs> so I work. I work at a place. And um, I I'll just say this, me and my sister used to play with Barbies. We loved Barbies and just making, creating different scenarios with them. Me and my sister used to um, make talk shows up and the name of her talk show was On the Scene with Lurleen. <laughs> Lurleen, and she would like interrogate you with questions or like box you into a corner, like humiliate you. It, it was so funny. Like me and my sister just creating scenarios. That was that was one of my favorite things to do. Um, what would be your I made it moment? When I can buy my parents a house, um, when I can move them out of their current house, and you know, pay off that mortgage and just see them living how they deserve to. Um, if you could give all entertainers all over one piece of advice, what would they get? I'm not in a position to advise, but if I just were to say what I feel, I would say um, it's all about authenticity. Be true to yourself, but do not. Selling out is like we do it every day. It doesn't matter what job you have. So never be afraid to go to that next level and echelon for a lot of money, even if you think it's not quite what you want to do. Um, we do that every day anyway. I don't see why like it has to be different in music because once you decide to make it a career, then you have to start thinking about it differently. And I don't think there's any reason to beat yourself up or think that you're any less of an artist because of that. Yeah, I feel you. Um, so how has the pandemic, you know, affected your, your your business, your career? I would say it's been a blessing in disguise. Um, I've seen what you guys have done, and I've seen um, the way I've had time to get quiet and get still. It really messed with me though, because I think I, I went, I definitely went through a depression, not having this, not being able to be out among people, not being able to commune with people in public spaces, not having nightlife. And when that started to come back, I started to become alive again. So, um, but of course that pain, I haven't processed it all into music yet, but I think it's gonna come through tonight in the performance, just the fact that I haven't done it in so long, like I, it's building up, you know? So I could say there's only been a good thing. Uh, uh, how are you going to change the world? Uh, you know, that's a funny question because when I used to do documentary stuff when I lived in Brooklyn, like I used to ask people, is the world a beautiful or ugly place? And when they would answer, beautiful, I would say, how do you make it so? And when they would say ugly, I would say, so how do you contribute to that? It's either or. So it's funny that you're asking me that. Um, I'm going to change the world uh, one little step at a time, one interaction at a time, um, one song at a time, one performance at a time. I like that. So why should people follow and support you? You shouldn't. <laughs> I don't believe in shoulds. I think you should do what you feel. I dig that. Um, well, how can how can we follow and support you? Okay. <laughs> if we want to. I'm so exact. I'm, I'm such a nerd. Um, love stars world. 
So it's at Love Stars World on IG. Um, you can support by coming to shows. You know, just find me, talk to me, ask me questions. I love when people reach out with authenticity. Um, I love showing love to people. So. So, uh, do you want to do a performance tonight? Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do Hell it. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Star. Oh my God, I'm so amazing. <laughs> hmm.
even know what to say about this man. He's just like the perfect person in my life. My uh, my sister, Jordan, um, my baby, Ruben, um, new friends I've made tonight, beautiful people in the audience. Um, CJ over there, always showing support and love. The beautiful bartenders here who put this up. Kept the libations flowing, kept the vibe going, and the mood going. Of course, I'd love to thank God, all of our parents, good or bad, absent or present, they all made us who we are today. Um, and just all the um, beautiful artistic influences throughout life, ancestral plane, all that good stuff. So we're in this together, y'all. 2020 is almost over. 2020 is almost over. Give it up. Give it up. 2020 is almost over. You're a woman or man or whatever you identify yourself of as the year. Of the year. Yes. So. And please like, share, and subscribe, and be good to yourself. Yes. Hello. Yeah.